Welcome, Rocketeers! The Fallout TV show looms on the horizon and threatens to be something I might actually watch. Having played all of the games, except Brotherhood of Steel, and enjoyed all of them too, even Fallout 76, if for no other reason than the fantastic blast processing. Unlike something like The Last of Us, also adapted from a video game, the Fallout TV show need not be constrained by a singular story, but rather the universe the franchise has built since 1997. Right now, we know very little about the production, and what we do know could be good or bad, depending on your, you know, your opinion. So, welcome to wild speculation country. Let's begin. <laughs> The Fallout games are set in an alternate universe where the culture of the 1950s, in America at least, didn't end until a toasty nuclear exchange between the United States and Communist China. Throughout the series, we only ever get glimpses of the pre-war world, with almost all gameplay taking place in the wreckage of America, and sometimes virtual reality. Set in a future where the transistor never really caught on, and where, before the bombs fell, everyone was driving around in cars powered by their own nuclear reactor, Fallout mixes pastiche and homage of science fiction ideas from the 1950s onwards. In the games, the player takes on the role of someone new-ish to the play area, who along with following the story, can potentially make the lives of dirt-faced wastelanders slightly more tolerable, almost always by shooting things. Or, if you don't fancy being a goody two-shoes, you can go on one of many various types of spree, almost always by shooting things. The show is being executive produced by Todd Howard, who is an executive producer at Bethesda, the company that owns the Fallout rights and produces the games. Geneva robertson Dore, the screenwriter behind Tomb Raider and Captain Marvel, James Altman, Bethesda publishing director, Graham Wagner, exec producer of Silicon Valley and Portlandia, Athena Wickham, who executive produced Westworld, together with Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan, who is Christopher Nolan's brother and sometimes screenwriter. Joy and Nolan are married and were the creators and showrunners of Westworld. They're also the show's writers, and Nolan is directing at least some of it. So, I don't know how you feel about those people producing this. I don't know who you are. Uh, but to me, that's not a terrible role. Um, I don't think anybody in that production team has the sort of unchecked ambition to definitely ruin it. And Bethesda's presence is reassuring, perhaps. So too is that Jonathan Nolan says that he is a hardcore fan of the games. And I believe him. I mean, there's no reason not to, but you would say that, wouldn't you? I'm a big fan of Gumby. Did you know? And I was ribbing it a while back, but, you know, it would be an honour. So, call me Gumby Fuel. To me, the most important factor of this adaptation is recognising what makes Fallout original and beloved. Almost all its ideas and characters are references to, or direct borrowings of, established science fiction tropes. Tonight's tale of oddness and obsolescence from the Twilight Zone. The franchise is heavily inspired by the likes of Lost in Space, A Boy and His Dog, and other writings by Harlan Ellison, Damnation Alley, and of course the 1988 game Wasteland. Foolish, sad machine. The ideas that it presents are not unique alone, even when it dials the absurdity of these tried and true flailing arm robot ideas to 11. Now, your brain, hand it over, or we'll extract it again. Yes, Fallout has it all. Bipedal robots with laser beam eyes, talking brains in jars, dudes dressed as Luferino, zombies, talking zombies, 
zombies dressed in John Hancock's actual clothes. Necker fascists, robots that look like people, robots that look like robots, robots that don't look like anything you've ever seen, robots that think they're cows, murder monsters, amphetamine use, exploding slave collars, psychopathic corporations, shadow governments, secessionists, Chinese spies, dudes who worship Elvis, dudes who worship A-bombs, people who live in bunkers their entire lives, and a man who thinks he's Caesar. But none of these things, in my opinion, make it especially unique, even with the bonkers goofiness. It's that, combined with the seriousness of the characters occupying the wacky world, where the violence is real and life is miserable, that makes Fallout what it is. The games wouldn't be nearly as successful if they didn't manage to balance the weird world with real feeling characters as effectively as they do. Getting the balance right here is really the deciding factor on whether the show will work or not, and surely the biggest challenge for the show, simply because mediums cannot usually be directly translated. Fallout's blending of humour and excess gore, I would argue, is far easier to pull off in video games because, among other things, graphical and physical limitations prevent gore, even when that gore is piles of rotting heads type gore, from being truly horrific and humour killing. The games can be very violent, but the violence is usually played for laughs. Can the silliness of the games translate to TV without compromising the stakes or ruining the tone? Well, yes, but I think if there's a pitfall for this project, it's that. Saying that, the tone and how comedic elements sit with dramatic or violent elements can be influenced in the edit, so it's not as if it's a trap that they have to fall into. So yes, my main thing is that I want them to maintain the universe of Fallout, not only visually, but in terms of tone. The producers have said that their story will be original, and I think that's totally the right thing to do. But as for the route that takes, I personally don't really mind. It could be a love story, a MacGuffin thing, fixing power armor, you know, as long as the tone's there. I mean, don't get too avant-garde with it, you know, have things happen. Well, they're saying that, I suppose I could watch 15 minutes of Sturges just sitting there scratching his balls. Yeah, I'll fix it in a minute. Where's he getting all that pomade from? I want to know. Really, the stories of the games are fairly straightforward, if potentially tangent-filled to the point of never-ending. I don't really mind if the story takes a traditional fallout route of I need to fix my water chip, better go outside, or really, whatever. I just don't want it to be a retread. I don't mind references to, or even cameos of, some of the characters in the game but I don't want Preston Garvey walking across the frame every 10 seconds like he's forgotten where the camera is. More specifically, I think it would be a mistake to have the TV show give us a tour of set pieces from the games. In the Uncharted movie adaptation, an original story is presented, but it's built around elements cherry-picked from the games. It's an original story, but remember when Drake has to clamber over a box free-falling to Earth? Ideally, I would like an inherently wacky world with a grounded story and characters that aren't necessarily David Mamet complex, but are more than just cartoons. But I think it could work if told linearly or not, if it presents itself as a serial or not, even if each season tells a completely different story in the same world. But I do think it would be a mistake for the show to recreate already told events. I don't need to see the Battle of Hoover Dam. I was there, sunshine. Or something untold but irrelevant like how Nick Valentine got his hat. Easter eggs are fine, maybe a few eyeballs flying towards the camera or heads shooting 50 feet into the air after someone gets punched. I'd say in fact, Easter eggs, i.e. references to things in the game, are well suited to this particular show, but I definitely don't want the story to be built around them. I think almost as important as a grounded original story in getting the setting right, and in this case the setting really is the foundation, is that the show 
doesn't lose any of the moral nuance in the games. The games don't all have the same take on the same factions. The series is no longer controlled by its original creator, and the entry that comes up most often as the fan favourite, New Vegas, was outsourced by Bethesda. So the franchise is old enough and expansive enough that some of its lore contradicts, and much of it really doesn't make any sense, at least in terms of real-world logic. But, in all its outings, Fallout's people are unchanged from the people of pre-war and the people of our universe. They can be generous, greedy, selfish, they're more complex than simply being good or bad. Usually. In Fallout 3, the Brotherhood of Steel, who the player has to work with to advance the story, and who are basically presented as the good guys, are still treated as morally dubious. Certainly so in New Vegas and Fallout 4. I think that is very important to the core of Fallout. Factions and groups are usually morally grey, sometimes downright evil, but very rarely downright good. Some characters and stories are pretty straightforward, but a huge part of Fallout's charm is how subversive it can be. I don't want them to dumb things down, especially this aspect of the games, and likewise, I hope they don't, and I doubt they will, make things remotely family friendly. Saying all that, I certainly don't want it to be a checklist of Fallout things. Episode 1, Power Armor, Super Mutants. Episode 2, Vertibirds, Ghouls, that sort of thing. There's little public information out there right now, other than leaked photos and... leaked photos. The set photos show a strong attention to detail, at least in costume and set design. The flag of the New California Republic and the vault number here suggest the vault in question is on the west coast. We know filming took place in Utah, New York, New Jersey, and Las Vegas. Mr. House, an important character from New Vegas, is listed on IMDb as appearing in one episode. A character called Maximus, a very Caesar's Legion type name, is listed as appearing in four episodes. So, is it set in the West, with the events of New Vegas being relevant? We know basically nothing, but honestly, I kind of don't care where it's set. It has the potential to be good wherever it's set. I do really hope that it turns out to be good, but however it turns out, it certainly will be interesting to watch. I'm vaguely optimistic, and I'm especially looking forward to seeing how Walton Goggins will star in it as a ghoul, but he's only in four episodes. I mean, you know, it's not the producer's fault, but every article I read. You know, starring Walton Goggins. Is it starring Walton Goggins, or is he just in it? Whatever. Thanks very much for watching. That is the end of the video. You can support me on Patreon, where you can get these videos a week early. Uh, also Twitter, Facebook, and so on. And now, here are my demands. It will be Mr. Handy Led. It will be shot almost entirely in bird's eye view on a static crane. The sets will be designed to create an illusion of isometric perspective. Almost all of the non-Mr. Handy characters should be Protectrons. The Protectrons will be the primary antagonists. There will be vast scenes where Protectrons debate their subdirectives in Protectron Parliament. The Protectrons should all speak in the same voice as the games, with no variance, and for long periods of time. You know, so we really engage people. You know. There will be a subplot about John Hancock digging up the bodies of George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, only to find they were protectrons, protectron, protectrons wearing powdered wigs all along. And actually, we can have a whole other bit where he's looking at, you know, ye olde painting of George Washington, and if you look closely, yeah, that is a protectron. And what, how did no one see? The story will be narrated by Uncle Leo. Uh, I'm thinking that it should be told in such a way that it's almost impossible to understand without the narration. Um, every plant in the show will be credited as Harold. That's a contract thing. 
Comedic relief will be attained by cutting to super mutants trying to assemble an aircraft engine. The production will save money by licensing one piece of old music and playing it on a loop. People will never notice. To avoid cliches, the show should use naked geriatrics as ghouls with Walton Goggins' face CGI'd over theirs. Because otherwise it would look stupid. The viewer should earn experience by watching and, a, and an achievement by finishing the season. And maybe you could multiply that by, you know, how many times they watch the season, etc. You know, you could get a silver for watching it three times. Or maybe a silver for watching it all in one go. Mmm, without pausing. The Mr. Handy should be puppeteered, Jim Henson style. I don't really think I need to say that. that you know, it goes without saying. All references to vaults should go, and pe people don't really like vaults. Uh, you know, it's not really important. Liam Neeson should play a character called Your Dad. Uh, and the last one, the show should lead into a spin-off, Mr. Handy Babies. So, you know, I think that's reasonable. And if they can do all that, well, you know, they'll have a corker. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>